the tough question. Hello! Hello! My name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Cavre, a couple that might love board games. Maybe. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, what we got for you today? We have a June update of kind of what's been going on with our lives and what have we been playing? Mm -hmm. I feel like we should talk about what things that aren't related to board games first, just quickly. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, go for it. Well, obviously, um, if you've been following along our journey, you know that we've recently moved into a new place. We're finally settling in, but there's a lot of small projects that we definitely want to get out of the way. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been really fun, but obviously it's a lot of work. And how do we make time for board games? We just force ourselves. Well, we, 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 we definitely <laughs> yeah. still make time. We, we still make time. Games. <laughs> but um, it's been nice too because we we also got a new puppy. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in April, May, start of May, May. Yeah. Uh, and then we also recently rescued our new cat friend. Yay, Swanson! I'm gonna put a little picture up for you right mm -hmm. here. He'll visit us eventually, but he's still getting accustomed to our house, and he's made a lot of progress so far. So that's been really exciting. Yeah. Um, and they're all slowly getting along. <laughs> nice little family. Yeah, in particular, we have to be careful about the puppies uh, and introducing swans into them. So, mm -hmm. time will tell. It's been pretty good so far. Pretty good. But let's dive into the game. Board games. So, in June, Holy we played Lord. how many? 39. Actually, 39. Oh, we played 40. Oh, yeah, we had to send one away, right? Oh, 41! Because oh, we, we did play Winter Haven Woods, which we had to send away, but you can check out our playthrough of it on our channel. Great. Links down below. But the other one we played is our neighbor introduced us to Suburbia. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that was really fun. I've heard so many good things about it, and yeah, we found it. our neighbor is also really into board games, which is perfect. So uh, I got the chance to play Suburbia, and I was not disappointed. No, it was a great game. But we're going to dive and talk about all of these in... A different manner but essentially the way we're gonna go throughout this whole process is we're gonna go back and forth and ask questions such as what game surprised you what was your favorite experience of the month and we're slowly gonna narrow this down to eventually nothing on the table nothing on the table okay <laughs> I think we can do it well before we start if you're new here feel free to hit that subscribe button we love your company we make videos regularly and we love chatting about board games. So if you have anything you want to tell us about board games or ask us about any of these games, feel free to comment down below and join the conversation. Exactly. Let's do it. What is your favorite game that you played this month? And I think I know the answer. Because I think mine might be the same. <laughs> Hadrian's Wall. We didn't do a countdown. Oh, that wasn't really to... anticipated. Oh my goodness. Yeah, mine was also <laughs> Adrian's Wall. <laughs> That's yeah, why it's not up here. It's so that. close. <laughs> um, what a fantastic game. It's uh, essentially a flip and write, and we're going to be talking a lot about flip and writes and roll and writes in the next month or so, so stay yeah. tuned. But, ah, this game is just a pleasure. Yeah, I um, am a huge fan of Shem and Garfield games, and mm -hmm. uh, they just like never disappoint me, and Paladins is my favorite game ever. <laughs> Uh, but Hadrian's Wall is so neat. It's just like, I don't even know how to start with it. It's like, you feel like you can play it with other people, but you can play it by yourself, and it still feels like a really great game. Yeah, they actually released a solo campaign. Which I am uh, dying to get. We, we're going to probably play, probably after we film this video. Mm -hmm. But this game is wonderful. It's designed by Bobby Hill, and we'll definitely be chatting more about it down the road. And that is Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. What is the next game? What, what's your ask me what's a question? Your I guess. Question. Hmm. I have many. We can just go through my questions. Yeah, you maybe you should just go through your questions. Okay. Let's let's do a countdown this time. So, <laughs> uh, what game surprised you the most? And let's go. Oh. Let's take a look before because I don't I don't think I've decided yet. Um. I think I know. I think oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. I think I'm tied. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Three, two, one. Enchanted Plumes. Irish Gage. Oh. oh, interesting. Okay, talk about Enchanted Plumes. I'll so this one's by Calliope Games, mm -hmm. 
and it's just like very very beautiful you it's like a set collection game essentially mm -hmm. and you just want to put together the same color plumes or you can create a rainbow colored plume and then bring it down yeah. so but you have to have the same colors the colors kind of cascade yeah. down mm -hmm. um and it's a lot of fun it's it, relatively fast mm -hmm. and it's actually like I felt like I was gonna do very terrible at this game um, because you get points for finishing it. He won. <laughs> and then yeah, and then I ended up taking the win, and maybe that's why I was surprised by it. But <laughs> it it seemed I really enjoyed it. What it ended very fast because you have like yeah. the, the game ends when you draw a certain card and it's near the bottom of the deck, and the deck is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So you think you have so much more time, and all of a sudden the game's over. But it's really clever because the, all the cards have values and the uh, the you, the top, tail goes yeah. top to bottom, yeah. but the top numbers are worth negative points and everything else is worth positive. You can build different plumes at the same time, but if you do that and the game ends, you just end up with a lot of yeah. negative points, yeah. which may have happened to me. But there are zeros, so you can have like a row of zero That's and true. get negative zero That's points, true. which is maybe what I did. But <laughs> okay. Enchanted plumes. Enchanted plumes. Do you want to grab Irish Gage? Irish now? Gage! This game did not surprise me because it was exactly what I wanted it to be. I So the reason this game surprised me is I'm not huge into bidding games. Especially uh, when they're competitive. I feel like bidding games to me are more like party games potentially. Like Wits and Wagers is a really good example. I really enjoy that game. Yeah. But a lot of the bidding me mechanisms are just... Like Modern Art is not my favorite game. Like it didn't really vibe well with me. Um, that one has like really strong bidding components. So I was a little cautious about this one. And wow, it did not disappoint at all. Mm -hmm. I really, I think, the re essentially in Irish Gage, you'll be traversing the lands of Ireland, building railroads and investing in companies and getting monies. And it is published by Capstone Games as well. Yeah. And the reason I really, what surprised me about it is I expected a very like structured game where everybody builds, everybody bids on the company. You have like certain things that happen at certain times, but the game is entirely controlled by the players. So you have one of the four actions, you can build trains, you can start an auction, you can sh get dividends, or you can kind of put special interest in different cities and towns. So, and that kind of tug and pull between all of it is really interesting because you want to finish a railroad before someone calls for dividends, but they don't want to call for dividends because they don't want to finish a railroad. So it's kind of like a, there's a little tension piece throughout the whole game. I really enjoyed it. It surprised me quite a lot. Yeah, I think like the one thing I'll say about it is that kind of caught me off guard is it wasn't it wasn't like as invested in the bidding aspect as I thought it would be, mm -hmm. which is probably in your case at least like beneficial because mm -hmm. you don't need to focus on that bidding. No, mechanic. yeah, it's so not really. But it's it's a really intro. Like I still I love the bidding in here because it's so. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just, oh, I really, I can't wait to play more of it. You're gonna play Ride the Rails now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because it's like very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is Irish Gage. Okay. Um, wait, which is the game that we've played? Because we've played all of these games at least once. Mm -hmm. But which game have we played the most of? Out month? of all of these? Yeah, out of all the ones here. <laughs> like in total or just this month? No, just this month. Probably Railroad Inc. Mm, yeah, we could, well, I won't say we got conned into it. We decided <laughs> to buy the uh, app for this game, and I basically play it everywhere when we're not able to play a board game. Yes. <laughs> so I'm obsessed. So, and there's so many different ones. I guess so, let's talk about them. I guess kind of like a story for this is, um, Ilya was like, oh, we should get a bunch of um, roll and rights, because I heard that uh, some of these are really good, well, a lot of them are really good. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, oh, what about Railroad Inc? And I'm like, sure, let's just try it. Me not having like heard of it at all, basically. And then um, we get, which one did we get first? The blue? Well, the, mm, was it both of these or no? I think we got two at the same time. Yeah, it was blue yeah. and red we got And the then same the time. next one came in a different order. Mm -hmm. But, um... We still have yellow coming too. Yeah, so Ilya orders these games and then we have two of them. We played both of them and I was like, the base game exactly the same. How much money did you spend on this? <laughs> and <laughs> but the so expansions is yeah. what makes it worth it. And then we tried the expansions. Like, okay, this is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, 
That's fine. And then we got this green one, which has these building icons on the board as and well. Goals. And goals. Mm -hmm. So it expanded the game so much more. And after we played the green one, I went right to the app and was like, yeah, yes, I'm playing this a lot is, of the app. Yeah. I think this is another one that surprised me a little bit because I've seen it out and about and I, I always look at it and like, well, how much fun can you really have connecting a bunch of railroads and trying this like same over and over? A lot. You can have a lot of <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah, the answer is um, a lot. Yeah, I think the, the replayability in it is just remarkable because not only will you want to be your own score, but there's that like, you can play it solo, you can play mm -hmm. it together with folks, um, you can play with up with a lot of people too because having all of these you can kind of cross Everyone can have the board from a different one and play the same game. So that's also really interesting too. Yeah, the boards are essentially the exact same. Mm -hmm. Except and for when it comes to the green ones. The goal is the same and it's essentially just like a game of adapt adaptability. Of looking at the dice and trying to make it work. Which I am not that great at, but I've been really enjoying it. That's a lot of fun. And I'm really excited for the Blazing Yellow edition. Blazing Yellow? But this is Blazing Orange. Blazing Yellow. <gasps> it's not Blazing Yellow. What is it? Scorching. Scorching Yellow? I have no idea. I see it right here. It doesn't... Shining yellow. Oh. Shining. Shining like the sun. All right, that's Railroad Inc. And that is Railroad Inc. <laughs> what is a game you would introduce to your family? To my family? Yep. That we haven't already? Or that we have. Uh, it can be the one I, I think have. my parents really... I think we really have to play Monstrosity with my family. This one... It's, it's basically... It's a party game. I would call it a party mm -hmm. game. Yeah, but it's... Fantastic, hilarious, and you don't even have to be an artist. Basically, this game is you are a sketch artist, mm -hmm. except all except for one person, and that one person is describing to you the monster card that they drew. Mm -hmm. The witness. You, yes, the witness. So, oh, they're playing the witness. Yes, they're yeah. playing the witness. So they have 20 seconds to look at the card, mm -hmm. and then two minutes to describe to everybody around them what the monster looks like. And it's just such a blast because, mm -hmm. um, you get to work on a lot of things, like describing things, like looking at these cards, really remembering what's going on. And then the people's artistry, like it's you, actually you, better if you just draw like very quickly and, and don't like put yeah. an extreme amount of effort into the art because they look so funny. And that's- Yeah, there's a, you definitely don't have to be great at art yeah. for, to enjoy this game. Mm -hmm. But what I really enjoy about this game is a lot of games similar to this one, it's just strictly the person will have two minutes to say something. But in this two minutes, you can the everyone else can ask questions. So they'll oh, say yeah. like, the eyes are like you have four eyes, and I was like, well, what what size are the eyes? Where are they? Where are they on the head? Like, are they like, wh what does the pupil look like? What is this? Are they sleepy? And I think that's what makes it really fun, and because you do have that really large engagement because someone says something and you have no idea what they mean. Yeah. But you have the opportunity to clarify. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, I really enjoy this game. I can't wait to get more expansions because we're almost through all, all the cards. Well, no, all the cards of one deck. There's that's two true. decks. That's true, there's two decks. So, yeah. But I'm sure I'll be getting all the expansions because once, I'm, I have a bad memory, so I'll forget all of them pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're fantastic drawings. The art is beautiful in this, but it's just so unique that it's mm -hmm. like, if you remember every single card you looked at, good on you. That's very true. <laughs> next one! Up next. So the one that I would introduce to my family, um, I think would be Illusion. Nice. I really like this game. It's a nice little small game, but essentially you have cards that have the green, yellow, red, and blue, and they have them in varying percentages. And you, your goal is to based on the color that's drawn, put them in an increasing or decreasing order. So you'll draw another card and you'll add it, like you'll move it in an added line. And at, if at any point you can say, the next person can say that's wrong. And if they, if it is indeed wrong and the person that just doesn't line up, then they get, they get the card and they win. But if it's right, then the other person before them gets the card. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very much an illusion of a game because you're trying to look at the colors and try to make sure that you know the right amount in each of the times. So I think it plays pretty quickly, it's very engaging, it's a really easy game to introduce. I think my family would really enjoy it. Yeah, and I mean, even the box says, can you trust your eyes? And that's exactly, that's what this game is. You're just no, looking it's... and hoping for the best. <laughs> the eyeballs are not trustworthy. <laughs> okay, cool. moving on. Illusion. Your turn to ask us a question. A question. 
Which game out of the ones on the table are you most looking forward to playing again? Again? Yeah. Well, the ones that I would have said hey James Wall. <laughs> um, do you want me to go? Yeah. Give me Destinies. I knew you were going to say that. I <laughs> love <laughs> Destinies. So we, we've only managed to play the first scenario with it, and I've really been bugging Tyler to play, play it with me. Mm -hmm. But do you want to grab it? Yeah, I have a hard time with uh, Lift up no, games that have apps in them, or games that are like app involved. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, the Destinies is a great game. I like, I had a lot of fun with it, but it was like getting into it that was really hard for me because, yeah, something about apps. <laughs> Yeah, there's something about the analog experience just having on a table, but I like I think this game does such a good job because essentially it puts all the administrative pieces on yeah. the app and it makes like all the pieces where you would have to do anything like the less fun portion of the game is all on the app and it's all kind of streamlined. Yeah. But the actual game itself is so neat because essentially each player will get their own destiny and they'll have one of two to kind of choose from. Yeah, it's like good or bad almost. Yeah, and then they'll be doing actions on the board, trying to fulfill their destinies before other players do so. But the catch is, is some destinies kind of overlap. So that's what happened in our game. We were both trying to find silver items, mm -hmm. and Tyler kept stealing what? my silver items. I was just better at finding them. <laughs> <laughs> but I really want to get this game back to the table. It's, it's a really cool narrative game. The story behind it is so cool. Um, the mechanics are really clever. It plays really. It's just dice rolling, right? Yeah. yeah, dice rolling and area discovery. Yeah, it's just it's really, it's a really good narrative game. Yeah. Like I really, I I was really immersed into the story. I wanted to know what was happening. I wanted to kind of get to that point. It was almost being like in a movie of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, like with this game, it's like because it's story driven. There's a decent amount of reading, That's but right. like still great game. Love it. I know what I would say. What would you say for mine? I am looking forward actually to playing Petrichor again. Mm, that's yeah. Because I feel like I didn't, when we played it, I didn't fully understand it. Um, and then I was ready to play it again. And we actually just played this recently. Mm -hmm. um, and we just got it. So it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But it was like. Sometimes <laughs> games just like. I just can't wrap my head around what's going on in some of the games. A and lot of games you have to play, yeah. like the first game as like a learning game. Yeah, and Petrichor is definitely one of those games, at least for me, mm -hmm. but it was such a blast to play, and then once like you finish playing it, you realize you're like, hey, I actually know what I want to do next time. And then you start building strategies, and to me, that's what, that's a good quality to have in a game. Mm -hmm. This one actually probably won all the categories, all the questions we already answered, because I, it was it was like a close second in all of them because uh, I I was really surprised by it because the theme integration was really 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 well done because essentially you have these clouds that you're trying to put water on that you're trying to like mark like drop to the ground through thunder clouds and there's like the me the mechanisms in this game are just so clever and cheap, it makes yeah. me very happy and I love mm -hmm. the name of it I love the art in it uh, there's lots to love about this game and I really want the expansions now. Because there's a cow's expansion. A cow's expansion? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like I knew there was expansions, but I didn't know there were cows. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, and that is Petrichor. So what game would you recommend to folks right now? Right now? Mm -hmm. mm. I feel like we've been on like a high rolling rights. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I would go to with Trek 12. Talk about it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's like, it's got like, well, it's a rolling, right? Mm -hmm. And you're basically putting all of these numbers together to try and make consecutive um, bubbles. To scale the mountains. Yeah. Or get the exact same numbers in the same spot. Yes. But the great thing about this game is it sets you up to like unlock things mm -hmm. after you um, do different goals, which makes the game even bigger. And there's more things to get involved with. Um, you can play it as like a starting mm -hmm. or j with just like one trek is what they'll call it And then yep. you can also go on an expedition, which is three treks mm -hmm. so you end up going through an easy a medium and a difficult one and Whoever has the most points at the end wins. I want to say the um, This game is one of the best for kind of modular additions mm -hmm. because it is 
it's unlocking more, but it's not like clumping it in a sense because you still choose. Like, yeah. I find with some of the games, the modules, like you have the base version, but it just grows and it gets a little clunky in my opinion. Where this one does not do that. It's such a absolutely love Trek 12. Yeah, it introduces a lot of cool things. Okay. Yay, Trek 12. The game that I would recommend right now is Mass Transit. Mass Transit. So this is a cooperative game in which you're trying, uh, published by Calliope Games, in which you're trying to get the six commuters home. It's as simple as that. So you'll have a hand of four cards and you'll play them. Um, I think you have to play it one or two or you have to play at least one and I think you can play up to two up to two yeah. yeah, so one or two and you're trying to get them to the end of the lines and The stations are either they have to be at least three or four yeah. um, The paths have to be at least three or four and the reason it's called mass transit is you're gonna vary from taking trains buses boats and walking um, and uh, you have to position the stations in a way that you can skip a lot of pieces. So for example, you can take the bus that can essentially get you home. But it is a little bit difficult and I don't know if... I think we were really we close in one No, day. we beat it. Did we? Yeah. It took us a, it took us a few tries though. because like, many tries. I think, I think what we were doing with this game is we were getting so fixated on trying to make like the perfect the lines. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not necessarily what you have to do. There's ways that you can move like from bus to bus you go bus to bus and then boat to um, the end goal. Mm -hmm. And like, that's still great. But what we were trying to do is we were trying to go like boat all the way to the home, train all the way to home. So it was like not working out for us. And then I think, yeah, I think I was like, no, this is not how we play this we game. We kind of figured it out, but it's still tough. But I definitely would recommend check out Mass Transit. Mm -hmm. um, up next we have is which game would you cull out of all of these? Get rid of it. Uh, call it is essentially get rid of our collection and pass it on if you had to choose one. A tough question. I asked this and I don't even know the answer myself. It just makes me sad. Yeah, I have no idea. I guess if I had to call one game, it would probably be Vamp on the Batwalk. But like, eh. This is a weird position to put me in. <laughs> Vamp is Vamp is good. I really like this game. Mm -hmm. It's not like, it's like blind trick taking essentially. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I don't really like about it is like, it feels chaotic and super random. Fair. So I just like can't get behind that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way to stop it from being like chaotic or random. Like mm -hmm. at least with the dice rolling, like a lot of the roll and rights, there's ways to like pull back and be like, well, mm -hmm. I can just change this dice. But I feel like there's not really a way to do it in this. Besides but, deducing what you have in your Yeah, hand. I think a lot of it, it really shines at, I really enjoy this game because it does shine at higher player count because you'll be looking around and you can almost guess, but not quite guess what's in your hand, which is what I really like about it. Because obviously if you can see everyone's hands and everyone had all the cards, be pretty obvious to what you have and you just yeah. guess where it is um, but I think that's what I really enjoy about this game is it introduces trick-taking in a more fun fashionable way true but fair yeah. uh, if, if we're not gonna call it no we're, we're not, not gonna get rid of it but if we I had, had to, to if he had to yeah. now the one that I would call this is also a really tough question and I'm a little sad that I asked it why did he even ask I don't even know because <laughs> you know it's 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 the question that people want <laughs> um, I think mine would be so hard. Dizzle. Dizzle. Fair. Um, I think we've been playing a lot of Roll and Rights lately. I really enjoy this one, uh, but it is a little mm, simple in the beginning. There is four levels, and it does like get up there in difficulty and gets more exciting. But it's I'm something. Mm, this is tough. I like it. I, like I think I get what you're saying. Like you just like, it doesn't compare compared to the other rolling rights we have, it doesn't just spark my joy as much as it could. I still really like it. I love going through the levels. We're not getting rid of it. This is always a terrible question to ask. <laughs> well we have we have to if there's one then we have to. But I do really like that there's levels. They kinda address that for having like there's an intro level that you can bring people in. Level four, there's like rocket ships you can fly to and it's very much uh very interactive. Oh, holy, holy. Game, if you ask me. I agree. We're not call we're not calling anything anytime soon. We love our games. If yeah. we didn't love them, we wouldn't play them. 
That's true. That is true. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of very specific ones. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just go into this. What game would you be weirded out if you saw people play at the park? Secret, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I adore this game so much and I'm so happy that our restrictions allow us to be with more than two people now because mm -hmm. this is a three plus player game. Yep. And it's very culty and I love it. Because <laughs> essentially what you have is you have traditions and you have cards that are rights. And everyone has these little card like little like sleeves essentially. Yeah. And some of them you can see through, but some of them you can't. So the outsiders can't see through. So you'll pass this little card around, they'll have the right, they'll say like, um, cold or something. And well, the outsiders doesn't, don't know that it says cold. So then they take a look at it, they pretend to see it, they put it down, everyone goes around. So all the people that are not outsiders know, and the outsiders don't know. And then you'll have like the tradition of cold is this. And the tradition can be various things. So let's say the clothing of this right is, and then everyone goes around and go, the clothing of, uh, the clothing of this is a uh, warm jacket. And then everyone ah. goes, ah, warm jacket. And you go in a circle and at the end you say, you point to who you think the outsiders are. And I think it's just so culty. I love the interaction of everybody yeah. like being in a circle being like, ah. Yeah, Ilya like definitely makes us, it says it in the rule book to do that, but like Ilya makes sure that we do it. That's part so. of the fun of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's like a race. Good. I think I'd actually say Holly. Holly? Yeah. And no particular reason, like I don't think it's, a, I don't think it would be that strange to see people playing, but it it's looks basically really cool. the setup. Because like it's just this giant tower, right? Mm -hmm. Of three layers. Of three, yeah, three layers, and people are just like moving things around, grabbing mm -hmm. things off of it, putting paint on, like hitting other people. It's just like, I guess it would more intrigue me than anything, because if I saw just a board on the table, I'd be like, oh yeah, they're just playing a board game, I don't, like, I wouldn't That's pay true. any mind to what they were playing. It definitely has very glorious table presence. Yes, so this would, this would be like, wow, okay, what are they doing over there? Another one I'm really happy that we can get to play with more than two people, because I think this game shines and is so much fun at a higher it's player It's way better count. at a higher player Because in two player count, it's very much, it's kind of like chess, it's, like it's very goal. strategic. Yeah. You know, you have to account for the other person where with like four players it's just colors everywhere you're hitting everyone it's so much fun mm -hmm. i really enjoy it very close scoring too. oh my goodness oh there's the lawn yawning monster right now sleepy sleepy speaking of sleepy <laughs> i was just gonna say that. let's talk about <laughs> sheepy time Haru. i really enjoy this game and there may or may not be uh, a check it out of this game coming this week. Um, it's basically like a push your luck game. <laughs> and th yeah, the, for those of you who know, those are very down Ilya's mm -hmm. alley. It's a lot of fun. You basically play as a sheep and you want to um, jump the fence as many yeah. times as you can. Jump the fences. Yep. <laughs> and evade the nightmare. Exactly. And it's really cool. Like the reason I love this game so much is that you can catch up and win even if you're in last place and you never and the combos that can happen in this game because essentially you'll, you'll be playing cards and moving on to pieces but as, as the game progresses those areas will have this new actions associated to them so there's so much potential for really wacky combinations yeah. and it makes me so happy and i remember i got to demo this game a long long time ago and I could not stop thinking about it, so I'm so happy we finally have it, and we get to play it, and it's so much fun. Yeah, he wouldn't stop talking about it, because I unfortunately wasn't able to join the demo no. that day. Missed out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's been raving about it ever since, and mm -hmm. finally this month we got to it. Speaking of Push Your Light games, the other one we can talk about is Megaland. <laughs> That's true. This one, this one was another one that surprised me. Mm -hmm. I was really happy with, actually I don't know why it surprised me, it's a Red Raven game, and... I typically love Red Raven games, but yeah. it's like very arcade. It's like an engine builder esque game type mm -hmm. game, um, and yeah, you just it's it's like push your luck, engine building, right? Yeah, you, if yeah. you like games where you kind of play competitively but collectively, this is kind of fun because you'll all be going through the levels and you'll decide if you want to push your luck and stay mm -hmm. or leave with all the treasure and loot that you have. Yeah. So and if you leave you potentially get to miss out on more treasure, but 
you can also miss out. <laughs> exactly. So it's really fun. Uh, you play at the same time as simultaneous. No one like. It's very engaging, and I really enjoy it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good game. Good game. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's put this here. Why don't we just talk about Nova Luna? Nova Luna. Nova this was actually a game that was like very, very like near the start of our collection. It was. Yeah. I think the amount we've played this game so many, so many times. times. I think it's just so it's so much fun because it is a race to the finish. You're collecting and trying to get. It's a very spatial game, and I am particularly not great at it. But I won this time. finally. Yeah. So I think I've only won this game twice, and this was one of the times, and I was so proud. Yeah, I love this game because I'm good at it. <laughs> he is really good. That, that's it. I he I rarely win against Tyler. There you go. Yay, Nova Luna. And then let's also talk about Mystic Veil vale, because it's on the edge. So, one of the few card crafting games out there. Uh, you'll there's a lot of empty sleeves. You'll essentially craft cards. This is also another classic we played it so many times. Uh, I look forward to actually, I think it's about time that we get a few expansions of this because there's so many out there. Yeah, I didn't um, realize how many there was, but I think I'm running out like of... like seven or eight. Yeah, I'm running yeah. out of strategies that I want to try. Yeah. So I want to yeah, explore some expansions. more. But yeah, it's really neat because it's also like you can start playing before the other person. And it's very like, it's yeah. a bit fast paced yeah. and we play it so fast paced that sometimes we get <laughs> two turns. Yeah. So like I bust like two times in a row, like whose turn is it? But yeah. it's really engaging, it's really fun. The balance between collecting the veils and kind of building your cards and making your cards stronger. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I actually do well in this game. Yeah, I really like this game, it's fun. Mystic Veil. Since we're getting down to the wire, we're just gonna rapid fire. This is the wire? There's so many games left. There's so many. Is this- Yeah, okay, let's rapid fire. Does this mean fire. we need to play less games? No. Okay. Well, let's start with Poly Ominos. Boom, New York Zoo. Amazing game. Did we do it? I don't know, we did some, I think oh. we reviewed this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we reviewed it. Anyways, this is a fantastic game. You basically get to build your zoo and whoever fills up their zoo first with enclosures and then freeze well you don't have to free all your animals but you get to free your animals to get more that's the way rosenberg so it's so much fun yeah a huge blast and there's animeeples in it which you can oh never God. go wrong with yeah the other polyomino who's designed by the same person actually is a second chance so this is a flip and rate but you're trying to put these little polyomino pieces onto your board and finish it off like you would in patchwork or other games, make it as yeah. compact as possible. Mm -hmm. And I do not do well in this game. I love this game, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I actually do really well in New York Zoo. I win almost every time. Yeah, I'm bad at New York Zoo. But this one, mm -mm. it's really fun though, because you get to flip the cards. And the reason it's called a second chance is you can, if you can draw the card that's up, you can get a second chance and draw the second one. Mm -hmm. But then if you can't draw that one, you're out of the game. Out. Yeah. Second chance. Woohoo! Let's chat about Stick'em! So we were playing this game wrong. We were the playing The first like wrong. three or four times we played Don't it. Don't tell people that. <laughs> I just did! <laughs> we were playing this game wrong. Um, but we now play it correctly and now it's even... It makes even it more makes sense. It makes more sense. And it's even more fun. <laughs> yeah. But essentially the way it's played is that everyone plays their paint color first secretly. Then you reveal it. But then you, it's essentially a trick shaking game. But if you collect your paint color, you lose the points equal to that value of the card. Yeah. But for every other card you get, you get one point. So you kind of want to strategically make sure that players like Tyler get the high values of their paint color. And lose. Very fun game. It's a neat little twist on trick taking. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Well. I'll talk about Marvel Champions because there should be more boxes on Marvel this table. Marvel United? Oh yeah, Marvel United. There we should be more boxes on this table. That we're just going to put the base game on there. <laughs> we don't have enough room. We've been playing a lot of this because the new one came in. And all the expansions. Yeah. Yeah, 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 all the expansions, which is a lot. So we've been like trying different characters, um, admiring all the miniatures, using the beautiful playmat we got, um, introducing it to friends because it's relatively simple and it's mm -hmm. cool because it's like you just go around in a circle and perform the action that was performed before you and the one that you decide to play. All the expansion villains are, are so hard. I don't think it's we've... either that or we're very bad at this game. I don't think we've won once. 
We played the Green, the Green Goblin, Goblin destroyed and, us. Yeah, that Their like, mom would destroy us. Their mom was hard. <laughs> We're just... Their mom was hard. We'll get there eventually. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> More strategic thinking. And probably adding in maybe the right characters. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll but get there. Very fun. Marvel United. I want to talk about Mayscape. So this is a really fun Escape. solo game. Essentially, it's like one of those classic map, like maps, you know, you draw a pen and you try to solve the maze. But the cool aspect of it is it flips and folds. So you'll cross over, you'll fold over, you'll go back, you'll fold over, and it's just like a folding game of trying to get to the end. And there's seven mazes in this? Seven, eight? Seven or eight, I think it's seven. Yeah. Um, and then after you finish them, you also go back and there's a little achievement that you can achieve. So there's a lot of game in this little box, and different games is a wonderful job with this. Yeah. I like this with a little coffee, little latte. It's very fun. All you need is the piece of paper and the stylus that it comes with. Mm -hmm. And you don't even need that. <laughs> no. You just bring it if you want. <laughs> yep. Wow. Let's talk about... Hey, that's my fish. This is a cute little adorable game. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of the... Fall Guys, is it? Is it? M Mario... Mario has a game where you have to like avoid uh -huh. stepping on multiple on the same space yes. over and over again or you fall and lose the mini game. Yes. And this is exactly what that is. You are allowed to move in straight lines. But you're collecting um, fish. And you're trying to collect fish and before the ice breaks. Mm -hmm. And when you collect the fish or you move and then collect the fish, and whoever has the most fish wins. Yeah. It's clever because there's different tiles that are worth more. Yeah. So you're trying to block people off. It's it's actually a lot of strategy in a small box. Yeah. Yeah. It's very surprising. Copenhagen, Roll and Write. We'll be chatting about Roll and Writes much, much more this summer. Or, yeah, this summer, summer I guess. Yeah. So I won't get too, too much into it. But this one's really neat because essentially you'll roll dice and you'll have real re-roll opportunities. But the more that you re-roll, the more benefits your opponent. And you're trying to get certain shapes to fill into your town of Copenhagen. And hopefully you win. I'm also very good at this game. I like this one. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Space Base! Now this game is not leaving our collection ever, I think. No, yeah. It this is, is fantastic. Definitely game. one of our, I want to say top 10 games that we own. Is that um, too bold to say? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. You don't know? Anyways, it's like one of those games that we've, we've successfully shown to everybody uh, and everybody has loved it. So we'll keep it in yeah. here forever. Well, I think the reason it's so good is that when you roll your dice, everyone else is engaged on your mm -hmm. roll because they can benefit from it. Yeah. So it's like almost like a gamb <laughs> gambling piece because everyone's just waiting for that perfect roll. Yeah. Um, I, I built a strategy around a 12. Uh, and this hopes time, for the 12. And I did not get the 12 at all. Yeah. But I still won, so I'm okay with that. Space Base! Yay! Fossilis! Fossilis. So, for uh, embarrassing confession, for the longest time, I thought this game was called Fossils. And I always referred to it as Fossils. Yeah, well, you just take out an eye. It's like, yeah, I definitely thought this was Fossils. But this game is super, super neat. Essentially, you're an archaeologist digging for bones, and the setup is you just put these scatter these bones in these holes. You put the plates on them, and it's really neat because you you move the tiles and they move everything depending on their weight with them, including some of the workers. So you can fall off the archaeology site. Um, there's a lot of really fun combinations in this one. This one, I actually really want to play this one. Maybe we can play this one soon today. Yeah, it was a lot of fun actually. Um, I really, I particular, it's silly. I'll say this, but I particularly enjoyed the setup for this game because you basically have to like. Um, put everything on top and then yeah pull this little uh, piece of like cardboard basically out so that all of the tiles stay on top of it and it's just it's very satisfying. It is very very satisfying. <laughs> but that is fossilless. Yay fossilless. Okay, you're, we're getting down to the wire. Oh no. Well, let's talk about Mandela Stone. Another big box. Well we actually just recently did a check it out for this game. Mm. But it's a, one of our top abstract games that we have. Yeah, if you like Azul, I've said this before, if you like Azul, <laughs> play this game because yes. it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's very abstract strategy based and set collection kind of thing. So Great at two or more players. Mm -hmm. Mandela Stones. Yay. Inner Compass. We've had this game for a while and we finally got it off the shelf of shame. Shelf of opportunity. Yes. 
which made me very excited. I really enjoyed this game. It surprised me quite a bit. Um, the theme is a little bit abstract uh, because essentially you're trying to find your inner compass and discover all these emotions and feelings. And yeah, it, it made me feel a lot of things throughout the game, that's for sure. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. What do yeah, you say I think about from it? like from box to game, like it felt very different. Like I didn't expect the um, whole like, uh, yeah, finding your inner compass. I thought mm -hmm. it was like just directional based stuff kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the case. I mean, you move in directions, um, but like yeah, having the different colors represent different feelings was it's very neat, very neat. Essentially, you're trying to collect. It's like a set collection and grid movement game and you're trying mm. to populate the grid before other players and there's goals you have to kind of bit there's a lot of like small mechanics in one yeah and it definitely left a really good impression on me yeah excited to fun. play more mm -hmm. sonora sonora yeah so this one's fitting for this month or this week at least because we've been having such a hot week we're yes. in a heat wave right now we sure are so sonora based in the desert the sonoran desert mm -hmm. and it, yeah it's a, it's a, it's what they call a flick and write so you just like flick these numbers numbered discs onto the board and then you end up drawing based on these um discs but there's like four different mini games and they all kind of like interact with each other and you get to make so many different chain reactions and i get obsessed with those chain reactions and i'm talking really fast but because i get obsessed with those uh, chain reactions, analysis by the paralysis. Game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or paralysis by analysis, darn it. Analysis, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think what's really cool here is it is, I don't think I know of any other flick and write games, so it's very unique. And if you introduce it to anybody, it'll definitely leave an impression because it's really clever. The art in it's really cute. Yes. It's a fun game. Pandasaurus coming in clutch. Okay, I want to talk about Space Park. Space Park! So I, so I think this game does not get talked about enough for how good it is. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was definitely I, a lot of fun. I definitely, I didn't expect it to be what it was. I think it was a really, like, it's just extremely clever. The design, I think, just in general, Henry Audubon does such a good job at designing specific mechanisms that make the game really stick out. And... Yeah. Wait, what was the mechanic that stuck out for you in this one? <laughs> uh, I think it's a fast travel for me. Like, you get to, you can strategically use your fast travel to move around this board of, like, what is it, eight spaces? Seven spaces. Seven spaces. Yes. Um, and, yeah, you can, like, plan ahead because whatever you, whatever ship you take off, um, is the action you get. So, mm -hmm. if you end up collecting all these fast travels, you can... You can really like plan ahead to where you want to be. I like the blocking element of it. I think that's what mm, really sticks yeah, out that's with me. Because you really like want to, if you see someone close to winning, you can kind of play strategically and make it so they can't it delays the actions. game a little bit and helps you. Yep. Um, I just really, like I really, there's so many little tactile pieces in it too with the gems. Like it, it, it really resonated with me. I'm it's sorry fun. I couldn't quite put it into words. <laughs> but I like it, it's fun. We're talking about a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Divi Dice! Another roll and write. This one's really cool because you basically have to collect a 3x3 grid of goals or bonus powers and roll dice to um, cross off the numbers that are on those goals mm -hmm. and you score points accordingly. It is a lot of fun. Um, the one thing I will say about it is I, I felt, especially at two players, mm -hmm. um, there was a uh, lockdown, I guess, of buying the cards that were actually there. We were more focused on finishing our goals, which made the game seem longer than it should have been. Mm, I think that's part of it, though. It's yeah. kind of you'll get to the point where you want more. I think the tough, but the, there's no way to refresh it. That's what I. That mean. Is, that's true. Yeah. The the interesting piece is that there's uh, a row for more of like abilities and a row more for scoring. So if you focus more on abilities, even though they could be easier and beneficial for you to get and don't focus on the scoring, you won't really do well. So you, you have to always consider that balance in that game. Yeah, yeah, I have that on. Planet! So Blue Ridge Games does a really good job at producing really tactile games. So this one has mm -hmm. planets that have magnets that kind of chip into it, and it's very much an area 
3D hexagons, right? Yeah, th three. Not hexagons, they're like... I have no idea. Yeah, Some there, kind of there science. are many, many <laughs> sides. So, um, and essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to collect various sh uh, geographical systems. spaces that match other spaces. So like you want some water, based on the goals that are currently in play, yeah. you want maybe the water touching desert or the most water area. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because everyone's competing kind of for the same cards. So you have to kind of decide which ones you want to give up on and which ones you want to prioritize and how it fits into your own personal goal. Yeah. But really yeah. enjoyable game. Yeah, I really like it. I, I, I do have a high tendency of just wanting to roll the planet. Um, you can't when roll I have the it, planet. There's no point in rolling the planet. Don't roll the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Four more games! Medium is what I'll talk about. Okay. So, um, it's a mind reading party game. It's a lot of fun. Um, I was a little hesitant because we have this, we have this game that we play in the car. Um, yes. And I grew up playing this game <laughs> when I was younger where like you would start and you'd count down to three and then somebody would say you, a word. You'd all like say each it, of you would yeah. say a word. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to figure out how to get to a different word. Like the one the, in the same middle. word. Yeah. yeah. So that's what this game is. It's, it, it's that in a box. And I was concerned because I was worried that this game would like really isolate the two people that were playing in the game. Mm -hmm. But they've done a very good job at making it so that um, it, the game progresses really well. It progresses pretty quickly. Because mm -hmm. you only um, have three tries. Yeah, so you're not like stuck having um, like, yeah, two people just like go at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just thought they did a really good job. It's nice too because it a, it's a, not necessarily a catch up me mechanism, but depending on if you score first, second, or third, each of those chips has like a range that can be worth. Mm -hmm. So even if you won every single time, you can still lose because unless you, well, you probably can't. No. You sh yeah. The cool thing is, is you share scores with the people who you are do. right and yeah, left of you. That's true. So it's like uh, in between two castles, uh, except you get both scores added up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it, they've done a really good job of taking what I remember as a childhood um, like car travel game and putting it into a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed, very good game. All these games are very good games because if they weren't, we probably wouldn't play them. It would be easier to make a call list. That would be it. I don't think we call anything out of these. No. Uh, King Domino Duel. So at first, when I first saw this game and I looked at the back and I looked at the components, looked at this, I'm like, how does this relate to King Domino? <laughs> but as soon as I played, I'm like, this is King Domino. This it is, yeah. yeah. Um, controversial, potential opinion, but I think I like this more than King Domino. Really? Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is, like, you really get to create what you want. I think with King Domino, like, the reason I like this more is King Domino, you know exactly the tiles that are come up. Right. And exactly, like, who's... Like, if you have a really good spatial memory or, like, a photographic memory, <laughs> or, like, even if you keep track of tiles because there's a little reference card, you can see what's left. But here, anything can happen. That's true. Like, you can roll, and the fact that, you, like, the first player gets to take one dice... And then leaving the second player to take the two, like it's very, there's a lot of strategic elements in it. Mm -hmm. It's still the very much you have to like make sure that your grid closes yeah, off the I correct way, which close my right nose did. Really, yeah. But yeah, I really, I wish this was somehow able to be played at a higher player count than just two. I'm sure there's a way. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a way, but it's great because. I personally like it just because it's another two-player game to add to the list of the games we have. That's true. And um, yeah, because our two-player game list is not small, but it 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 needs exists. More. It needs more. <laughs> yeah. and that's King Domino. Yay! All right, that's pretty clever. We took way too long to play this game. Way too long. What do you mean? Because the game's been out for a while, and it's one of the oh. most talked about rolling rates. Okay. Yeah, this one's a lot of fun. It's just like you basically roll all the colored dice and then you put the colored dice into the spots that are um, for you. To the but colors. you you get to only, if it's your turn, you get to take three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if it's not your turn, you can take dice from the silver platter. The three remaining yeah. at the end. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get to take three because the you take... Whatever you take, all the dice below that dice gets True. to be put on the silver platter. So, for example, if you take a six, and there's no other sixes, you only get one turn. Mm -hmm. Which you probably don't want to do, but that's kind of getting into for the strategy. For you to figure out yeah. when you play this game. <laughs> yeah. But, really good game. We can't wait to play Twice as Clever, which I'm sure we'll play it we even have it now, today. Right? Yeah, who knows? Already planning all these That's pretty games. clever! And last, but certainly not least, Troy's Dice. 
I really enjoyed this game. I haven't played Troy's, uh, and I really want to, just to kind of get in on it and get all excited. But it's really neat because you roll dice, and oh, this one's hard to describe. Go for it. Can you help? Uh, <laughs> basically, you want to build like a. You're basically building a fortress and upgrading all your castles and components within yeah. your like city. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you have a day and a night, and then you grab. Uh, you grab those numbered dice based mm -hmm. on the color that they're on and place them into the corresponding places. Mm -hmm. There are like abilities that you can get too that help you change the dice, that help you um, like... And you're trying to collect people throughout the whole yeah, game, yeah, yeah. which a lot of them help you get. But the really cool aspect of it is starting on the third turn, there's this black dice that essentially cancels out one of the spots yeah. and makes you lose it unless you have a fortress protecting it. Yeah. So your spots can get narrowed down and the game gets tighter and tighter as the game progresses. Yeah, and I think like it's interesting with this game because the few times that we did play it, like I focused heavily on the fortress mm -hmm. and I started to realize that I don't know if you have to focus on having all six fortresses. Yeah, I think it was I think it's okay to give up some of your like spaces. columns. Because mm -hmm. they might not have to lose them. Yeah, yeah. They and like and that was the thing, is like at the end of the game, like some of the places that I was looking at mm -hmm. weren't even filled. So like there's a more efficient way to play the game and I'm sure that we'll figure it out. <laughs> and the last neat thing I'll mention is it's really cool because it rotates there's a little board in the middle that rotates. Mm -hmm. So it changes the spaces so every time the colors of them slightly vary and based on where the black one is it flips. So there's a lot of variety that comes to it. So it's not very predictable yeah. moving forward. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Troy's dice. <sighs> we played, obviously tired. <laughs> we played a lot of games in June. Yeah. So that was 39 games in however long this, this video many minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, technically 41, because we mentioned two other ones that we don't have boxes for, so... I guess, yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Tell us what you've been playing in June, mm -hmm. and let us know what you want to play the next month as well. What yeah, do, and if you, you enjoyed, if you enjoyed this video, like, let us know. This is our mm -hmm. first time taking a swing at this kind of video, mm -hmm. and I think it uh, turned out really well, but I am... Tired. Me too. Tired. And if it's really long, if there's stuff that you don't want to see, if you found some aspects that could be improved on, let us know. We're always looking to refine our content, make our channel a little bit more exciting. Um, but before we leave, let us know what, what game you want to play next month. Me? Yeah, you. The game I'm most looking forward to is I want to play On Mars because I really want to introduce it to our neighbor. I mm, think they really scary. enjoy it. Okay. So. I feel like that's a spooky game to be like, play this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mary Kaibo. Mary Kaibo because I've never played it before. Yeah. I know it's like a little like... The theme's not great, yeah, but, but the game sounds like it's really good. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, the one that I really want to play and it's been... I, I literally have been bringing the box up and we just have not had the time to learn and dive into it is A Feast for Odin. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I just... I've been, I've been dying to play that game, but it's so daunting to even look at all the components. But maybe with enough encouragement and motivation, July is the month to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to be in the mood to play that game. So hopefully you'll catch me on a good day. And maybe Tyler will finally play Destinies with me. Well, thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments for the games that you've played and the games that you're looking to play. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.